In this video, we're talking about different types of rolls of LED strips, not necessarily how to actually connect them and hook them up and do all that kind of stuff. That's not what it's about. We're going to try and keep this as short as possible. Less than eight minutes is very important. And we're going to talk about the actual chips, brightness, that sort of thing. And so this way you can get a better idea of a buying decision. Uh, we're also going to have other videos which cover power supplies and hooking up the lights to get the maximum use out of it. And we're also going to talk about using lights for indoors and outdoors and all that kind of stuff in a little bit more detail. But those will all be different videos to help make using lights easier for you. So let's start with the actual rolls of lights. So there's lots of different chipsets. When you're buying lights, uh, you're going to see the most common one is called a 5050. And if you're looking just for a multicolor strip, hey, guess what? That's what this guy is right here. That's a multicolor. It'll do any color you want. It'll even do a song and dance show for you if you want it to. Uh, you can just hit the remote control and it'll do all the options. That is a multicolor strip. This is the basis of what most LED strips that you're going to buy, let's say on Amazon, are going to be made out of. They're called 5050, which is five millimeters by five millimeters. So if you ever wondered what the numbers mean, the numbers mean the size of the actual chip. Now, this happens to be what they call a tri-light. So all three lights are built into one chip. That is a handy thing to start with when it comes to a platform. They also use this chipset for all the new white lights that are out there. You'll notice the white lights are solid colored and they also have a tinge. So this isn't actually yellow. When we plug this in, this is going to be a warm white. If we looked at a chipset that had a lighter color yellow in it, like this one here, we compare the two. What we're going to see is that where this one's almost orange in color, this one's definitely very light yellow. This is a standard to cool white temperature. And this one here is a warmer. So lower number like 3,500, that would be here. I'm referring to Calvin's 3,500 Calvin. Up here, we're up to like 5,000. So this is a cool white. White that most people tend to enjoy is somewhere around 4,000. It's kind of a neutral white. It's a, a good white to actually use if you're looking for um, something that's not going to have that blue glow to it. When you get up to 5,000, you're definitely going to start seeing a blue glow. So temperature is really important. That's what the Calvins are for. If you're down low at a 27, then you're definitely into a warm yellowish light. They'll think of it like a candle light. If you start getting into 4,000, now you're at a neutral white. It's not going to make anything brighter or more vivid, punchy colored light and you're not going to start getting this ice cold look to it that you get up at 5,000. Uh, for example, homes really like to be, have a nice warm look like a living room. You want to have it nice, warm, a home theater, that sort of thing. That would be in your 3,000. If you're trying to do videos or any type of filming and you don't want to alter the color, or if you're displaying something, you want that to be as neutral as possible, then that would be your 4,000. If you want to be like retail store, white where everything looks brand new like vivid the colors are just punchy 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 and you that's the look you're looking for that's going to be your 5000 i don't recommend 5000 for home that's pretty sure there so when it comes to chips like i said the 5050 is definitely the place where most people start with because that's the most commonly used chip today but there are other chips that are used this is called a 5630 so again 56 so 5.6 millimeters by uh, three millimeters coming down. This is a very bright chip. It gets used a lot commercially. Uh, and there's even a brighter chip, which is called the 5730. And we have one of those as well. That particular chip, uh, again, even a little brighter than this. These 10, even though you can buy them on a strip like this, uh, which is really nice because this is a solid diode. Uh, the problem is, is with solid diodes like this tend to get more of a neutral white on one side and a cooler white on the other side. That's the difference there. Now you can buy a chip that's even tinier than all of these, but it's a super hot chip. This guy here is called the 3017. And again, it's three millimeters by 1.7 millimeters. So it's a very, very tiny chip. Uh, again, these tend to get used for small showcases and displays. It's very intense. When we power this up for all these little chips, it's really, really bright. So we do that. And you'll notice that this happens to be in that 5,000 range because this does get used in showcases a lot. In this case, we're going to power up the actual 5050 in warm. So now that's our 5050 in warm. So really, it's a much nice, more calming color. Uh, again, most people do like to get it instead of this, which happens to be closer to 3,000. You get it more in a 4,000. That'll give you a more neutral light. It's like having both 
a cool and a warm turned on at the same time. The other big advantage to a 50-50 versus any of the other chips that are solid, the tri-light actually helps diffuse the color better. So this way, regardless of the angle I'm looking at it, I'm always going to have the same temperature. And that is a, a design integrated into the 50-50 that you're not going to see in the other ones. That's why these are actually round where the other ones are square. Remember, the 5050 was designed to be originally the multicolor light. So being able to mix those colors together was very important, and that's what it was all about. So when we plug that multicolor back in, even though we have individual lights, in this case, it's just the red and blue that are on to a certain degree, uh, that is helping to mix that color together and give us a more natural purple off of the actual light itself. That's what's going on there. And that's what the 5050 was all about. By the way, none of these are very expensive. If, if they're not UL, you're not going to pay an arm and a leg for it. On the economical side was this light here. This was, this is a 3528 or a 2835. And by the way, the reason why you'll see both numbers being used depends on the orientation on the chip, the way they placed it on the actual board. If they put it sideways, it would have been a 3528. They place it long ways, a 2835. That's all that was really going on there. So if we actually want to power this guy up here, I'm going to need to put the actual connector on the end. And we have that here on the table. So this is a quick connector and we are going to add it on to here. This quick connector was originally designed for these lights, but amazingly enough, quick connectors are one of the most pain in the butt products to buy online because for as many times as you can get the right connector, you can also get the wrong connector. So this was the connector I had on the previous light. And I thought, well, I'm just going to transfer it over. It is eight millimeters and this is also eight millimeters, but there is a basic problem. These connectors are closer together on the actual quick connect versus the cable. And that's because of the way they set up the chips. So again, I'm going to try and do this so we can get this to happen. But this just shows you why I'm not a big super fan of quick connectors. So we're going to put that on there and see if we actually make contact power and there we go oh this just happens to be a green laurel so this is the original strip lights now i would definitely if you're looking for something not too intense and saving some money and you want to get a lot of lights installed over a large area or on a large panel and uh, you don't want to have to dim it down afterwards these econo lights are pretty good still to go with uh, they tend to be incredible value added uh, and usually they're more of an accent light. So you're doing a small display, a small dis setup. Maybe you're using these inside your actual computer case, that sort of thing, where it's an enclosed space and you just want to add a little light to it. Getting these basic ones, again, 2538 or 3825. Again, small number set chips. And of course, all these lights come in the primary color. So that would be green, red, and blue. And you can also get them in usually about three to four different temperatures for white, which would be your 2700 to 3000, 4000, 5000. They even go higher than that, and there is numbers in between. But just remember, the higher the number, the cooler it is. So the closer to blue it's going to get, the lower the number, the warmer it's going to get, the closer to that red-orangey color that you're going to see. Now, there's one incredible chip that everybody misses. They, you know, people, unless you see it, uh, can't believe all the chips that we've looked at so far are basically pointing straight up so when i have this the light is going right off the actual chip straight up from the chip there is a special chip which has a very small number to it it is called the 335 so it's 3.5 by 0.5 millimeters the important thing is as you notice the lights are not set in the center they are pushed off to one side the light actually does not fire out of this side this is the plastic side housing the light comes out of here this side of the strip. So when we power this guy up, so when I take this light and face it down on you, you'll notice the light is all going away. If I turn this roll over, look at that. All the light is pushing off to the side in one direction. Again, I'll flip it back, point it downwards. There's no light really coming off. There's a small amount, only 10 to 15% coming off the side. The bulk of the light is all coming off right off, off the edge here. So, and there we go, that's the 335. So the 335 is a really great light. Whenever you don't want the light coming towards you and you want the light to cast from, let's say the front of the shelf, pushing back against the wall and going down the actual wall or onto another shelf, that's the way to go. Again, it's perfect for retail applications, especially whenever you have shelves stacked on top of shelves and you want to light up 
everything that's on the shelf. Having a light in the back of the shelf coming forward is good if you just want to do a little wall wash on the back. But if you're trying to show off whatever's in a showcase or on a shelf, having the light at the front of the shelf, cascading light on top of everything, but not in the actual customer's eyes or your own, is a really good way to go. Three, three, five. So remember in the other videos, we are going to cover the fact that some lights run on 12 volts and some lights run on 24. What are the benefits of that? We'll talk about all that with power supplies. That's what that's all going to be. Again, with controllers, we're going to have a whole video on controllers alone because there are so many great options there to be. Make sure to hit the uh, thumbs up button if this worked out for you today. If you've learned something in this video, please hit that thumbs up button. Let them know that you like the video. Also, if you haven't subscribed, this is a great new channel. We've got a lot of content coming please hit that subscribe button. I would definitely appreciate that too as well. And have looks at our Amazon links because if I can find these products on Amazon for you, I am going to put them in the links down below. So again, I like to say thanks for watching. Hope to see you on the next video. Bye for now.